KSHB 41 News reporter Jordan Betts spoke with someone who trains with them in Blue Springs and takes a closer look at both of them. Good morning, Jordan. Hey, good morning, guys. You know, our women's team is in the subdivision three, which means that they start at 11 10 p.m. Pacific time and a very early 1 10 a.m. tomorrow morning our time. But this is the qualifiers for the women and they start overall at tonight at 8 p.m. What can we expect from this team when they go into their team all around event? Well, we can hope that they bring home those gold medals again. The one to watch and well, I'd say the entire world will be watching will be Simone Biles. She has four gold medals and one bronze medal and she isn't alone in this fight. Her teammates, they're bringing major talent as well to their team event. I mean, I think this team is like absolutely unstoppable. Each individual gymnast all has a certain part to play in order to get that team spot. Um, and they're all just so talented. And I know um, if they hit, they're on it and they're, they're, they're there for gold. So I know that's that's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we all hope that happens too. Finnegan is friends with team member Suni Lee. She's amazing, by the way. The Olympian told her that practices in Tokyo have been going great. So fingers crossed they will do well. And well, if you don't want to get up at 1.10 a.m., which is even early for us guys. You can watch it here on our station at 6.30 p.m. on Sunday. There you go, guys. Yeah, that's a much more 6.30 Sunday we like night. That. Settle in. You don't want to do a 110 watch party? That could be fun. Oh, we could try. Yeah. All right, Thanks, Jordan. Jordan. Heads live in the newsroom. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> First Lady Jill Biden hosted a watch party in Tokyo today for a U.S. Olympic softball game. With fans banned for the most part of the Olympic events, the First Lady went to the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo to watch the game on television. Before the game, she greeted the roughly 50 invited guests, showed off her Team USA swag. You saw the American flag on her sweater. Joked about not washing the outfit before she put it on. Walk down the hallway upstairs. I feel like a new kid. I mean, a kid on the first day of school. You know how you got all you, you have all your new clothes, but you didn't wash them. So like these jeans are so stiff. <laughs> so note to self. You know. Team USA took care of business again. A two nothing win against Mexico. The team's third straight shutout to open the 2020 Olympics. Up next, Australia. That's tonight at eight. Glad to see them doing well. And First Lady Jill Biden helped dedicate a room at the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo today while on a visit to Japan to attend the Olympic Games. A room at a U.S. diplomatic residence there is being named in honor of the late U.S. Senator Daniel Inouye and his wife Irene. Some of their family members attended the event virtually. The senator served in the Army in World War II and represented Hawaii in Congress before becoming a senator. The First Lady unveiled a framed certificate. Dr. Biden honored the late couple for what she called remarkable contributions to the United States states and Japan. The morning after the Tokyo Olympics began with the opening ceremony, people in Tokyo had mixed feelings. In a busy shopping district, some said they had doubted initially whether the games would even happen. They now want to fully support the games despite all the uncertainty. However, others not sure it's the right time for Japan to be hosting an event like this while the infection rate of COVID-19 is jumping dramatically there in Tokyo. China's national women's volleyball team, the defending champion, has again set its sight on Olympic gold. The current team experienced, including seven players who were part of the underdog team that toppled Serbia for first place at the 2016 Rio Olympics. I love all these stories that yeah. come out of the Olympics, right? Like the women's volleyball team, the Chinese table tennis team also drawing a lot of attention. Look at this. This year's Olympic Games, eight players have been sent to compete in five events. Men's singles, women's singles, men's teams, women's teams, and mixed doubles. Table and this is all those things I, I think I'd be good at it until I try it. Well, it's one of those like things, but hard it is. unlike a lot of some of the other events, it's one of those things that you may have actually done before. Like right. most of us have picked up a ping pong paddle and then like, okay, I'm probably not good at this or maybe I'm, and then you watch them and they're like lightning doing so fast. This. Really, really amazing. Good. A Chinese athlete has won the first gold medal at the Tokyo Olympics, by the way. The women's 10 meter air rifle competition. Yang Chen of China won the medal. Pretty incredible. 21 year old beat a Russian shooter. She said later she felt the pressure. Her final shot was good enough to win the title of Olympic champion with Olympic record total score. Look at how she's holding this gun, the setup there. The third gold in the last five Olympics for China in this particular event. Congratulations to her on that gold medal. Wow. America's world number two in the sport, Mary Tucker, was eliminated early. She finished sixth, unfortunately, so that's sad to see. And I actually, you know, there's several different shooting events that yep. go on. There's a trap shooter. That's a shotgun that we have a local guy that's competing pretty soon. My story with him coming up next week, so watch for that on 41. Can't wait. So many, so many athletes. So the Olympics officially started with the opening ceremony just about 24 hours ago. New reaction from one of the Team USA flag bearers still to come this morning.
All right, here is that typhoon that is near Tokyo, Japan, but it's way down to the southwest. We'll look at that in our forecast coming up. heard in a crash on I-35 in Kansas. We have a live look right now. First responders got the call in the northbound lanes of I-35 south of Lamar around 2.30 this morning. They found a car had rolled over. They're continuing to investigate exactly what's happening there, but you see traffic being impacted, diverted off the road south of there. We still don't know uh, any of the names of the people hurt or the person that was killed in this wreck, which continuing to learn more this morning. And this morning in KCK, there's a bike walk against crime. The leisurely group ride and walk goes about a mile and a half, begins at 11 a.m. It starts and ends at Eagle's Nest, north of 24th and Metropolitan. Organizers say this is a family-friendly event. Social distancing will be in place. So we're about a day into the Olympics. This was the scene yesterday morning, our time during the opening ceremony. No fans, but still plenty of fireworks. We'll talk to one of the Americans who walked through. Coming up. Good Saturday morning, still Saturday. Yeah. If you missed it live 24 hours ago or the rebroadcast last night or overnight, the Tokyo <laughs> Games have arrived at last. They're right. here. Trying to explain the time difference and what they're doing 14 to, my, hours. to my sons has been like confusing to even Nightmare? me. Nightmare? It, they're doing it twice. The opening ceremony took place in a stadium with thousands of empty seats, unfortunately. Japanese and Olympic officials were there with other Ameri uh, dignitaries from around the world, including First Lady Dr. Jill Biden. The parade of delegations began with tradition, Greece going first, the home of the ancient Olympic Games, of course. 206 delegations in Tokyo from all around the world, nations you've likely never heard of making their parade through. Mm -hmm. The U.S. contingent includes more than 600 athletes. Look at that. Look at that. The American flag bearers were basketball player Sue Bird and baseball player Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez is the first Cuban-American and baseball representative to lead Team USA. He says that is an honor he does not take lightly. He also talked about the games and the ceremony that generally won't have fans. It wasn't the same, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, you know, it, I, I think, and a lot of athletes will agree with this, you know, we, we feed a lot on uh, the adrenaline that, that fans give us. Uh, but either way, you know, the Olympic spirit was still there. Well, the Olympic flame was brought into the stadium, passed between several torchbearers. The honor of being the final torchbearer went to Japanese tennis star Naomi Osaka. She let the cauldron about the stadium. The games were declared officially open. Yeah, a lot of tennis fans here in the U.S. will likely recognize her. She's a fantastic tennis player, but she's yeah. playing for Japan in these Olympics. Yeah, man, the opening ceremonies had so many. It, it had a different tone, to be sure. Sure, absolutely. It was stunning. The flame at Tokyo's National Stadium will burn throughout the games. As tradition. Yeah, we're seeing it here now, but it, it will be fueled as a nod toward cleaner energy this time. Countries around the world tackling the issue of climate change. The flame is powered in part by hydrogen. It's the first time that fuel source will be used to sustain an Olympic flame. Wow. I'm, I'm surprised that's the first time. Mm -hmm. Previous flames have usually run on propane during the course of the games. Mm -hmm. So now we want to show it to you live. Unlike propane, hydrogen does not produce carbon dioxide when it's combusted. Mm. So the Tokyo cauldron fueled by hydrogen produced by a factory in the Fukushima prefecture that runs on renewable energy. Wow. Propane and hydrogen both used during the torch relay. Just one of those little interesting facts about the Olympics when you can look back and say this was the first time they did that. Now a second cauldron burning along the waterfront near Tokyo Bay also fueled by hydrogen. Millions of Japanese watching the Olympics, a sign of support for the Games. They say the International Com Olympic Committee is happy with that number. That is, despite polls and protests showing a large number of Japanese were in favor of canceling the Games over concerns it would become a super spreader event. 69.4 million people have watched in Japan alone, have watched some portion of the sport so far, and that's before the Games even have properly begun. That's more than half the, half the population. So you can see the huge support there is. Don't forget, NBC's coverage of the Olympics resumes right after this newscast, starting at 8 a.m. Here's your latest Kansas City forecast from Chief Meteorologist Gary Lisak. And could a tropical storm impact the game? So I'll talk about that in a second. Look at this. As the full moon sets, 
The sun rises. There's the full moon. We caught the, the moon set today. How often do you see that? Take a look at this. I zoomed in on it. There's the full moon setting. And again, as the full moon sets, the sun rises. That happens every single time there's a full moon. Just something that you might want to pass on to the kids. All right, right now our current temperature outside is 77 degrees. It'll be 80 here by about 8 o'clock in the morning. South southwest wind, that dew point is 72 degrees. Sunny, the weather dog, she's still sleeping, at least when I left early this morning she was, and so was Rainbow. Fill up that water bowl. Don't leave the pets in the car. Don't take them for car rides when it's this hot. Avoid walking the dog in the heat. Check on your neighbors. Make sure that the air conditioners are working. This is what's causing our potential heat wave next week. Still think it might fall short of really being called a heat wave. The air sinks underneath this thing and it's going to be near us Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday of next week. And that's when our hottest weather will likely arrive. So uh, anti-cyclone, the opposite of a storm system. Again, there is a cyclone that's way up here. That's the blow there rotates counterclockwise around storm systems and clockwise around anti-cyclones or the opposite of that. And you can see a huge one affecting the Western United States all the way into the plains. And this is by Wednesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the hottest days. And the Northeast has this cooler flow of air and we'll be on the back side of this. We should have a cold front here at the end of the week, which I'll show you here in a second. Today, temperatures are going to go up to about 95 degrees and it'll be 90 by around noon today. But the extreme heat is just to the west of us with 100 degrees plus. That heat will grow to 100 to 110, maybe even 112 degrees from the Dakotas down into northern Kansas. But again, we're on the eastern edge of this and we might have a few thunderstorms. This is this evening at seven o'clock, a couple of isolated thunderstorms for us. We'll monitor those this evening, uh, just a couple small ones. The chance is very low. And then as we go into Sunday, a couple might form tomorrow morning, small ones. And then during the day, a chance of a couple of isolated thunderstorms forming. So the chance is still about 30% tomorrow. And then as we go into Sunday evening, a couple of isolated thunderstorms. So it's all isolated, nothing too widespread, but you can see our models are showing some activity. Go to KSHB.com. I blogged about it. I gave a couple of examples of this. Uh, go check that out. 80 degrees, our forecast in the morning, 91 degrees. Well, it's right now, 91 degrees by noon, 95 at 3. This afternoon with the heat index 105, 103, remember in the sun you can add 10 degrees. So the actual temperature will be 105 degrees. Seven day forecast, heating up. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 97, Wednesday, 99 degrees on Thursday, maybe cooler next weekend. All right, go to the other side of the world. Here is Tokyo. There is a hurricane or a typhoon. A typhoon is a hurricane. They're exactly the same. They just call them typhoons in this part of the world. And there's another one. See this over here, east of Tokyo? This is the concern area, as this one is expected to form into one in the next couple of days and make a move towards Tokyo. So it could impact the games sometime next week. We'll be monitoring that close to me. Right now, the weather's pretty good in Tokyo. Maybe a couple of showers there, Taylor, Lindsay. Gary, thank you. Boxing competitions have started at the Tokyo Olympic Games. We'll have updates on some Americans coming up next. That's 9.25 p.m. in Tokyo. So a live look at the rinks. 14 <laughs> hours ahead of Central Time. Yeah, live look. Olympic competition, of course, continues in Tokyo. Boxing on the map right now. Let's check in with 41 Action News anchor Brian Madrick for some updates on that. Brian, good morning. Hey, good morning. A lot happening on the boxing front. Let's take a look, first of all, at Cuban-born Team USA women's boxer Yaracel Ramirez. So this morning, we're taking a look at her performance. She was the first Olympics. It's her first Olympic match under her belt, but unfortunately, it won't lead to a medal this time. Ramirez lost the featherweight fight to her Croatian opponent in a unanimous decision by the five-judge panel. Now, Ramirez was the last boxer act actually to make the U.S. team, but the first to compete in the Tokyo 2020 Games, and now the first to be eliminated. And I want to thank everybody for the endless support, the endless love. It really helps me push through, you know, some of the down moments and some of the up moments. I really appreciate it and love y'all. 
Things went better for Duke Reagan, who's actually from Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, his first Olympic bout against an opponent from France ended with him winning in a split decision. Reagan says his goal is a gold medal. Because there are no fans, Reagan says that having vocal teammates helps him in the ring. I definitely want to uh, th thank my teammates. You know, they, they were loud. I, I, heard, I heard them clearly. And um, back at home, I want to th thank everybody for tuning in. On one other boxing note in the overnight hours, Delonte Johnson from Cleveland, he faced an opponent from Argentina. Now, he barely advanced to the Sweet 16. On the five scorecards, Johnson won by a single point on three of them, and his opponent won by a single point on the other two. He now faces an opponent from Kazakhstan on Tuesday. Back to you. Thank Hi, you, Brian. Brian. Thank you. Don't forget, NBC's coverage of the Olympics resumes after this newscast starting right at 8 a.m. in about half an hour. All right, while well, a tropical system forms east of Japan, what is our weather forecast? I've got that coming up next. Good morning. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. I'm Lindsay Shively. And I'm Taylor Hamness. Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday morning. 7.30 on the dot. 77 degrees already. Ooh. Gary, I stepped out of my house this morning at about 4.40 and it was already balmy outside. <laughs> um, I know, it's warm, it was warm and muggy. The low temperature is actually reached right at sunrise, so it actually cooled off a couple degrees. Okay, Only good. a couple, though. So we had a 75 for the low, but we're about to warm up. You a ready? Lot. Mm -hmm. And you said, it's so funny, you guys are like, hey, uh, good morning, I hope you had a good weekend so far. It's like, it's an hour into it. <laughs> We're Friday just, night, Gary. Friday night in the big town. I know, I know. And Saturday night in the big town, we got the Royals game tonight. We have some interesting weather for sure coming our way. Tomorrow, maybe, maybe a thunderstorm tomorrow, all right? So we'll see how that goes. Uh, chance of rain is 30%, but not today. Beautiful shot out at the stadium complex. It is going to be a hot one. They're going for four wins in a row, the Royals are tonight. Uh, there is an excessive heat warning that's in effect, but it's only just about three or four degrees above average for this time of the year. But it is going to be hot, and we'll go over the details. Right now, it's still in the upper 70s, almost 80 degrees right now. And how high will it go? We'll look at that tropical system that could affect the games, guys, coming up in a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Developing news this morning, Missouri's Attorney General Eric Schmidt calls the new mask mandate in St. Louis insanity, promising to file a lawsuit on Monday. The city announced its new mask mandate yesterday. It's supposed to start next week. Is for the city and the county, I believe. And it will require residents five years old and older to wear masks in all indoor public places and public transportation. That comes after the area being one of several Missouri areas seeing a surge in COVID-19 cases from the Delta variant. Yeah, it definitely concerns me. I started like, uh, you know, just being like careless somehow. But I've had the vaccination and I uh, feel safer with it. So you have no concerns over the rise of the Delta variant? No, not at all. Now people here in Kansas City are wondering if there could be a local mandate as cases spike here. Sure. KSHB 41 reporter Leslie Dellisboard talked with local leaders and everyday people on the possibility of a new mandate in the metro. Our vaccination rates are so low, and the state of Missouri's vaccination rates are incredibly low compared to the rest of the country's. So making sure that we keep using our masks is what is going to be proven to help us. Help us get out of this pandemic, Bates says, and her friend Marcia Vasconcelos agrees, wanting Kansas City officials to rethink their decision. Just with Delta coming up and the cases increasing, um, maybe at least have a mask mandate indoors. Um, outdoors, I think it's we're still okay in the clear, but I definitely think they should reconsider. For the sake of his kids and other safety, Ryan Wixel says he hopes local officials have a rolling consideration on masks. Because the numbers change every day, they change every week, and, and we need to be flexible and be prepared to, to keep everyone safe depending on what happens with the numbers. Because the daily increase in numbers scares mothers like Lisa Marie Sauchuk, whose son is under 12, living with asthma. So I'm extra careful in trying to keep him protected, and not having a mask mandate means that we're really limited and a lot of the activities our children can do. Leslie Dellisbor, KSHB 41 News. On Monday, multiple school districts in the area will decide on masks and other COVID-19 protocol for the upcoming school year. This comes as KCK, KCK Public School District voted unanimously to require everyone to wear masks last week. 
Shawnee Mission School District considering masks for elementary students. The district, as well as Spring Hill School District, will hold meetings on Monday for that decision. We'll update you whenever those decisions are announced on Monday evening, presumably. To help with vaccination efforts, Metropolitan Community College announced they're giving away a thousand free classes this upcoming semester. Up to a thousand current and prospective vaccinated students can get a free class. All you have to do is register online on the school's website, fill out a form. The deadline to do so is August the 10th. COVID-19 is not only making its impact here, but at the Tokyo Olympics too. More athletes from more countries are being sidelined by the virus before they even have a chance to compete. Organizers say Olympics related cases rose by 17 Friday. That brings the total of disclosed cases to 127 as of today. Our own athletes, no stranger to this. So far, Team USA has had five athletes either test positive or be placed in what's called health and safety protocol. That sports impacted are men's basketball, men's beach volleyball, women's tennis, women's three on three basketball, and of course, women's gymnastics. As we learned earlier this week that KC gymnast Kara Aker tested positive for COVID-19. At last check, she had no symptoms. Her teammate Leanne Wong is still in isolation or was because of close contact to Kara. Both are replacement athletes for Team USA. All right, the long wait is over. The Tokyo Olympics, of course, officially underway as of yesterday. We have a live look from Tokyo right now. It's about 930 in the evening there. And you see the dark video and the uh, bright Olympic rings there. Team USA preparing for a full schedule of competitions today. One of those being the women's gymnastics getting started. That's right. Jordan Betts live in the newsroom this morning to give us an update before it all goes down. So, Jordan, what do we expect from this team tonight? I mean, people love watching women's gymnastics, one of the most popular sports. Exactly. I think also people love watching Simone Biles. I mean, you can't help it. We are all excited to watch our Olympians. But again, the one that's most anticipated in all these events we talk about the Summer Olympics is the women's gymnastics, especially Team USA. Right now, it's Saturday night, like you were talking about in Tokyo, and athletes like Simone Biles will be getting ready for bed soon as she will compete Sunday her time, very late and into the morning our time. Last time, the women's gymnastics team competed into the team event. They did incredible. They actually got gold, and they're hoping to take home several more gold medals this time. And again, Simone Biles took home several gold medals as well. The overall qualifiers, when do the women start? That would be 8 p.m. tonight. It's critical that they do their best in every single event to make sure that they bring home the gold once again for the team event. I mean, I think each individual athlete, I mean, they all bring something to the table. Um, however, they do have their own um, kind of like individual stuff that really stands out, you know, like each person kind of has like their own event. Um, more specifically, I'm thinking like standing with bars and like um, just all these gymnasts, they just um, they just have something to bring to the table. And so I think if you really like pay attention to what they do and um, how they perform, you'll be able to see that. So the women start at 1.10 a.m. tomorrow morning, our time. And if you don't want to get up that early, well, we will air it at 6.30 p.m. here, our time. The men did start competing this morning, and I just saw a photo that the women's team is there watching the guys and cheering them on. So we hope they take home the gold as well. So again, 6.30, you don't wake up at 1.10 in the morning. They'll be streaming that all on their NBC websites, guys. All right, Jordan, thank you very much. Of course, we're keeping a close eye on several local athletes. One competing in the games is from Jackson County. One of only three male pole vaulters the U.S. sent to Tokyo. And KSHB 41 Sports Director Mick Schaefer spoke to him. For Casey Lightfoot, his dreams started right where he dreams. I had a list and I printed it out whenever I saw it, put it above my bed. It's been there every day. It's still there. A list of the only pole vaulters in the world who have ever cleared six meters. Each apartment he's moved to or whatever, you know, he pull it off and say, well, we're going to have to repaint that wall. It sticks, you know. <laughs> And then, in February, a dream was met. Oh! Lightfoot cleared six meters, a new NCAA indoor record, the highest vault in the country this year, third highest in the world. You know probably faster than anybody else, and so you have a little bit of time to celebrate on the way down, and whenever 19, 20 foot, you got quite a bit of time. Yeah, here we are on the verge of the Olympics. After Lightfoot qualified as one of the three male pole vaulters the U.S. will take to Tokyo. I mean, the game plan is just like you would think. You just work out hard until then and hope, hope the stars align and everything works out. I still get so nervous. You'd think it would relax up a little bit, but it doesn't. So just get the blood flowing, hope everything feels halfway decent. 
So now it's KC looking to rep KC on the world stage, even though he's named after his mom's initials. A lot of people say, does KC stand for Kansas City? I'm like, no, it doesn't. And then I heard one the other day about my, about my middle name, Lee, and they were like, oh, it's for Lee Summit, right? And I was like, no. And speaking of names, KC has now added his own to his list. Just did it in Sharpie on the tape. I didn't want to ruin the list, but I put, I put my name finally on that six meter list. Mick Schaefer, KSHB 41. Man, what a cool realization for him. Team USA already going strong in the games. Lindsay, let's talk about how the team's doing so far. Okay, first let's talk about softball. Look at this. They said three for three, two and zero. Oh. They won two and zero oh against Mexico earlier today. This is their third game so far. They beat Italy and Canada earlier this week. Tonight they go against Australia at eight o'clock. So. Also, it was a record-breaking start for the U.S. women's national team in water polo. The team set the Olympic record for most goals in a game, 25. Look at these ladies in action. Largest halftime total, 14 in the first half. Biggest margin of victory, 21. They defeated Japan 25 to 4. Wow, some of the players shared how they felt after the game. There are a lot of uh, stereotypes about black people, so I'm excited that we're breaking those stereotypes, we're changing the narrative, and we're bringing water polo to Miami and water polo to my community. I think all the emotions that we've been feeling leading up to this moment, it's kind of nice to just kind of get it off your chest and be like, hey, that's the first game, now let's go. I mean, they dominated. Does That, that makes me want to play water polo. That sounds Does awesome. It? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Up next for the U.S. Women's National Team in Polo, 2 p.m. Monday in Japan. It's 12 a.m. Monday morning here. But, man, doesn't that make you want to watch? They are incredible. You can watch more teams today right here on your KSHB 41 station. Our coverage starts in just about 20 minutes at 8 a.m. right after our newscast. All right, Lindsay. Wow, look at this. There's Tokyo. There's a tropical system. There's a typhoon. There's... Uh, Beijing, where the Winter Olympics are going to be, and there's the biggest China city there, Shanghai. What is going on? I'll talk about our forecast and this coming up. Lefty Daniel Lynch up on Friday, according to manager Mike Matheny, the 24-year-old is going to start on Sunday against the Detroit Tigers. But that wasn't even the biggest news heading into this weekend series. Hot after sweeping the NL Central leaders earlier this week. To the K we go, Chris Bubich on the mound Friday night, bringing the double play mojo, I guess. Fill you in on that later. Bottom of third, Whit Merrifield here, sending it into left field. Hunter Dozier's got enough time to come around and score. Ties things up at one, so to the fourth we go. Ryan O'Hearn there lifting this one deep to center field. That ball stays gone. Three run homer making it 4 1. Royals just keep it rolling in the fifth. Carlos Santana taking this one out to right corner. That one's gone solo. Homer tacking on another 5 1 KC. And here's the double play action I was talking about earlier. Chop to Nicky Lopez, to Merrifield, to Santana. Two outs. That was the third double play of the night. Final staying with KC 5 3 as they improved to a three game winning streak. Defense was unbelievable tonight. Um, Nikki was there, Jeter basically, and uh, Doge and, and Witt and Santana doing the rest. So awesome. It was awesome to watch, too. Well, the Chiefs training camp kicking off officially on Friday. Rookies and quarterbacks reporting first practice, of course, underway on Saturday. But the expectations have already been made clear. Entering the best organization in the league right now. So, you know, expectations are high. Um, Team standards are high, and, you know, I'm ready to get in, get to work. Taking it day by day, uh, trying to improve every single day. That's just kind of the mindset uh, that everybody's kind of uh, told me about getting here. Uh, so that's just what I'm going to do. And remember, we will be in St. Joe throughout the duration of camp, continuing to bring your coverage right here on your home of the Chiefs. Well, in college football, Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC, it is looking more and more plausible. The university is expected to declare intent to leave the Big 12 within 48 hours. Chiefs rookie linebacker and former Mizzou Tiger we were just talking with weighed in on the possible SEC additions. Texas and OU uh, joining the SEC would be uh, excitement. I feel like that will bring a lot of guys uh, to compete against 
each other. A lot of Texas people go to Mizzou. Uh, so just being that, that competition of guys you play high school football with, uh, that 10 OU, uh, it's in Texas will kind of just bring uh, another rivalry. Uh, I feel like it'd be great for college football. And Sporting KC manager Peter Vermees confirmed on Friday that he has tested positive for COVID-19. He will not travel with the team to Seattle. Two other players tested positive as well. They're going to stay back in KC. He shared that he is fully vaccinated, but still got the virus. Look, I'm, I was vaccinated and, and obviously, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know how I got it. I have no idea. Um, uh, but what I would say is, is that, you know, my, my, my symptoms have been minimal at best. And another head coach testing positive for COVID-19, Kansas basketball tweeting out a statement confirming Bill Self's positive case. Self saying, I tested positive for COVID-19. I am in isolation. I was fully vaccinated and feeling pretty good right now. Also, Kansas City National Women's Soccer took on North Carolina that ended.